How's it going star seekers? Welcome back to the channel, where today we're going to be doing the dirty working body of evidence and taking up the job as a cleaner. But we ain't cleaning down no burger relish off the tables in McDonald's. Instead we're going to be cleaning up the aftermath of unfortunate altercations which have left a mess of bloodstains, bodies and weapons in the wake, all of which need to be disposed of in an orderly and timely fashion. Now if you're a bit on the squeamish side, this line of work might not be for you. But if you think you can stomach it, let's head on into this review and get our hands dirty. So Body of Evidence opens with a rather unusual scenario where we're taking tickets from passengers on a bus. Apparently we lost a game of cards and this was our forfeit, but we then wake up in an apartment block to the sound of a phone ringing. This is how our career as a body disposal expert begins, so let's take a look at how the first few days in my new job went and prepare yourself for a few minor spoilers as we take a look at a bit of gameplay. My first day eased me in with a single body just chilling in the bathtub and a rather artsy looking bloodstain in the shape of a swan. Grabbing the body with a press of the Y button I hauled the fella out of there, lugging him into an adjoining room where a green extraction point awaited. Now he was surprisingly heavy for his size which slowed down my movement speed, but I was rather proud when I managed to position him so that any unexpected visitor might mistake him for a circus performer practicing his skills and not a lifeless corpse. After this, completing the job was just a case of cleaning up the rest of the mess using a magical scrubbing brush before the timer run out in the top right corner, but it turned out that I'd missed a little bit of blood and my little balancing act hadn't gone down too well, so I failed the objectives and had to start over. Each level in the game usually has some mandatory objectives for you to complete as well as a percentage threshold for the mess you have to clean up. So I started over and our man took a seat while I gave the apartment a thorough once over which was enough to complete the objectives and move on to my next job. After a short trip across city I found myself in a makeshift science lab situated in a dark and dingy basement and while the client's tank top and gas mask combo made me question his legitimacy as a professional scientist, all doubt was quashed after I spotted the conical Erlen Mayer flask clutched tightly between his sweaty palms and I got on with the job at hand. Once more there was a body to deal with and the lab was in a bit of a mess, but I scrubbed away the blood stains and grabbed a nearby brush to sweep up the broken glass and detritus, before straightening the place up, righting the chairs and stowing boxes on shelves. Now the place was looking pretty spotless as the timer hit zero and I personally thought I'd done a sterling job, but it turned out my hiding of the body wasn't quite adequate, so once more I had to start over. This time round I spotted a nearby bottle adorned with a skull and crossbone symbol which turned out to be a bottle of super strong acid suitable for dissolving all manner of flesh, bones, clothing, glass eyes and nipple piercings. But the ragdoll mechanics weren't playing ball and the bastard simply didn't want to take his bath so I ran out of time. Third time lucky I managed to cram him head first into the barrel before topping it up with acid and with a magical he was gone and I was able to clean up the rest of the lab to an adequate standard. Day 3 on the job took me to your sushi, where an incident involving a katana had left a customer in pieces and the restaurant in a right shit state. A rather miserable sushi master informed me that the place was due to open for business in 10 minutes, so I got to work whilst he just stood there and watched, erotically caressing a fish with a knife. Now there was only one body to clean up, but unfortunately it came deconstructed and for some reason I'd forgot to bring my body bags with me, so I had to find an alternative method of disposal. Luckily the kitchen contained a high powered blender fantastic at creating limb puree, which was all rather handy if you ask me. The only problem was that I could only mulch a single limb at once, so between blendings I had to toss the appendage smoothie down the bog and flush it away by operating the smallest flusher known to man. Once all of the body parts were disposed of, all that was left to do was straighten up the joint and set the tables ready for the busy night ahead. However, I do believe I might have missed a spot, so at least one customer is going to get a little extra special sauce with the sushi, if you get my drift. Now after completing several jobs I'd accumulated a few friends whom up until this point I had been storing in my van. While it has about 20 cubic metres of capacity, room enough to fit a 3 piece sofa set or precisely 10 human corpses, the recent July heatwave hadn't been kind to them and the decomposing flesh had started to cause a bit of a stink. Luckily my scientist pal informed me of a surprisingly unpopular yet picturesque lake 
where I could quietly dispose of the body shaped potato sacks, and so I dragged them across its pier and plopped them down into its murky depths before heading off to my next job in a local bar. Upon entering I noticed a sign on the wall, informing me that this particular drinking establishment was called Beyond the Bicycle, which has to be the shittiest name for a pub I've ever seen, and if that wasn't enough, the E.T. inspired decor convinced me never again to set foot in the place after this job was done. It turned out that a couple of the locals had had a bit of a dispute over the last bag of pork scratchings, and as the landlord tried to calm the situation with a peace offering of dry roasted peanuts, the situation escalated, someone pulled a gun, and Mr Smith along with a few of his mates had been shot. The victor then made off with both the pork and peanuts, leaving his weapon behind and a mess to clean up. So much like the previous jobs, I hauled each of the bodies to the green extraction point, cleaned up the jam stains and spruced the place up a bit. I also grabbed the gun to be disposed of later, but in order to get rid of the bullet holes in the walls, the landlord was kind enough to lend me a putty knife which I kept for future jobs, and I did a spot of decorating before calling it a day. So after giving you a bit of a taster, as you can probably tell by now, each job in Body of Evidence generally requires you to clean up bodies and remove any condemning evidence, whilst utilising the tools at your disposal. As the game progresses, you gain access to a bunch of different tools, including soap which allows you to remove those tough to handle dried on blood stains, a spray which allows you to locate invisible remnants of cleaned up blood, and a torch which proves invaluable in almost every level. While I quite like the developer's choice of low poly visuals, I did find many of the game's environments to be poorly lit, and occasionally the torch would just glitch out rendering it useless. When it comes to gameplay, while Body of Evidence is simplistic in its mechanics, with most tasks involving you simply selecting the correct tool for the job before pointing your cursor at a particular object, the scenarios in each mission were used to good effect, adding plenty of variety and made good use of these mechanics. However, I did encounter a few issues with them, which led to a little frustration in some missions. To start with, the process of cleaning bloodstains or debris up was a little temperamental at times, with it failing to activate or the progress bar holly if your cursor wasn't positioned correctly. The time limiting levels, whilst compelling you to work with a sense of haste, were often very tight, but I found that this was primarily due to my main issue with the game, which falls down to the ragdoll physics of the bodies and body parts. While the eShop listing states you can lift, bend, move, drop and squeeze naturally, your ability to manipulate bodies is actually pretty limited, and while bodies do react accordingly depending on which limb you grab a hold of, it's actually quite difficult to get them to move how you want them to, which makes stuffing people into barrels, the back of your van or down garbage chutes a particularly arduous task. Bumping into the environment whilst carrying body parts often causes you to drop them, which usually results in them bugging out, stopping you from picking them up again without adjusting your position several times. Finally, for some reason you're unable to move at anything other than walking pace as the game has no run button, and moving most bodies slows movement speed down to an unbearable crawl, which does become an issue, particularly when time is of the essence. In all though, my gameplay experience with Body of Evidence was a positive one. There was some decent variety to the objectives and challenges in levels, and I enjoyed the game's dark humour which features some amusing scenarios and references to a well-known movie slash book. Audio wise, the game's soundtrack is not bad, consisting of compositions which would feel at home in any film noir movie, but sound effects are a little limited, with several of the game's tools sharing the same sound effect when used. In total, the game has around 30 levels, so you get a decent amount of content for the price. And if you've played and enjoyed games like Roombo, First Blood, or Serial Cleaner, which feature similar gameplay concepts, then Body of Evidence might be right up your bloodstained alley. So now let's get on to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of a title's gameplay, and whether I think it offers value for money to potential buyers. For a rating, I'd give Body of Evidence 3 out of 5 stars. With its simple gameplay mechanics, Body of Evidence is an enjoyable play if you're looking for a casual game to pass the time with, as long as you aren't repulsed by the sight of digital body parts or blood, and don't mind a bit of dark humour in your games. Body of Evidence is due to release on the 17th of December, and you can pick it up off the UK Switch eShop where it's usually priced at £8.99, or from the US eShop for $9.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam.
And that's it for this review of Body of Evidence. Hit that like button if it helped you out, and let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game in the comments section below. As always, smash that subscribe button to be notified of future Nintendo Switch reviews and content, and jump onto the Star Seekers Discord to join its growing community. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care and game on.